Thank you very much. I'm uh, hoping um, that you, after, uh, well, I wouldn't say a long day, but a busy day, can still uh, find your interest and uh, keep you guys interested for the next 15 minutes. By the way, I'm used to talk about this subject, subjects for at least 45 minutes, so doing it in just 15 is quite a challenge. But I will just start and hopefully I will be in time. But please inform me, Anna. Um, I work for Together, and Together is a company that provides self-driving um, public transit systems. And uh, yes, we've been doing this for quite some time now. Uh, the vehicle here, uh, you see, is our third generation. We are currently prototyping this, and we will be installing those in um, uh, several applications. Well, I'm going to tell you uh, a lot about that, of course. Um, <clears throat> and what we deliver actually is uh, not just vehicles, it's a complete transit system that is able to operate in a safe, reliable way without the need for a safety steward or a tenant on board. And, um, well, I think very important with high reliability and the availability to safety certify them. So not just getting approval, but also prove the safety. And that is, in my opinion, slightly different. Um, and yes, we have quite some background in this. Uh, actually, we started already in 1984 with uh, the automation of several industrial applications, so moving goods around in factories and outside, uh, automating uh, container terminals. Uh, we even use our software in theme park rides. So, uh, for example, you see on the left Pooh's Honey Hunt, uh, very exciting. Um, and, uh, uh, but also uh, more recent at Universal Studios in Florida. Uh, our software is running on uh, King Kong's Skull Island, where you drive an autonomous bus through the uh, uh, theme park, right? That's pretty cool. But um, of course, I'm here to talk about uh, people movers. And um, although I'm not a big fan of numbers, um, I think these are quite relevant because with our systems, and then I'm talking about the people mover systems, we transported over 14 million passengers to date, uh, driven over 100 million kilometers, um, and uh, quite importantly, uh, being able to reach a system availability of over 99.7%. Um, um, about our company, we are still relatively small, in my opinion, uh, now with 62 empl employees uh, coming from all over the place. And by the way, for the Swedish amongst us, we also joined Drive Sweden, so uh, hopefully you will see more of us in Sweden as well. Um, this is a, a, a movie introducing our company and explaining a bit more how we work. I um, hope you find it interesting. At To Get There, we believe in less talk and more action. After all, if you're looking for a partner to deliver an automated transit application, you want one that has real experience in delivering real projects that are operating and moving people today. From automated transit systems to autonomous vehicles operating in mixed traffic. We delivered our first project in 1997 at Schiphol Airport and our Rivian project has been fully operational since 1999, with other projects being delivered in Floriade 2002, Mazda in 2010, Blue Waters Island 2019, and many others trialed. With our automation software being deployed by our partners in diverse projects globally, we have a tested and proven collaborative delivery process that uses the system lifecycle methodology giving you the confidence that your project will be delivered on time and on budget. In the first stage, we will work with you to define all aspects of your project. We will deliver the key components that will act as the foundations for all future stages of the project. The overall concept is initially defined by assessing the project scope, context, objectives and environment, and safety implications. We then identify the system requirements and the overall architecture of the project. Once we know all our ducks are in a row, we move on to the development phase. This is where the project starts to come to life. Together, we identify and agree the design requirements with our partner, Zagato, who will help bring your automated vehicle to reality. 
Zagato's designs are the blueprint for the manufacturing team to start construction. And finally, prior to shipment, all your project subsystems will be thoroughly tested at our lab in Utrecht, including the system supervisory system. In the third stage, things start to get really exciting, as the actual installation of the project begins. Firstly, all systems will be verified prior to installation. Once installed, the system will be completely validated and certified to guarantee it meets your and all other safety requirements and certifications. Currently, we are the only company that has been certified to operate an autonomous vehicle without a safety driver. Exciting stuff! And in the final stage, you get to take a ride. Here, your system is finally deployed with all the right operating and safety processes tested and in place so you can become fully operational. Our process is focused on three things. Delivering your project with rigor, with professionalism, and as specified. Or, more simply put, on time and on budget. So, you can get on with moving people. Which is why we say, we deliver. Well, quite a long movie, but I think the essence here is that um, in delivering these type of systems, there's much more to it than just put a vehicle somewhere. Um, for us, it's uh, also keeping into account the requirements of the system. What should it be doing? Um, uh, where should it be operating? Uh, we use supervisory system for that. We use communications infrastructures, um, charging infrastructure. Uh, we need to install a maintenance facility. Everything to uh, ensure that it works the way it's supposed to be working. Uh, but you get the point. Um, as I said, uh, we also have two applications. Oh, thanks. Um, in operations already. Um, I'm pretty sure some of you have been here but not all of you, I guess. Um, this is in uh, the Netherlands, near Rotterdam. And this system is basically still the only permanent system worldwide that operates on a uh, at-grade level, has crossings with other traffic, but does not require a safety steward or attendant on board. And, um, very important, uh, it's been using, uh, it's used daily by uh, uh, 2,500 passengers, and it operates at speed of up to 35 kilometers an hour. So. Um, this is, uh, in my perspective, a bit uh, one step further again from a demonstration or a pilot because it actually solves a daily problem and people use it on a daily basis to get to their work and back. This is, by the way, a single lane bridge, as you can see. And the second generation you see driving here has driven over 250 kilometers each. Uh, 250,000 kilometers, I have to say. And this is the other, uh, I would say, more podcar-like system in Abu Dhabi at Mazdar City. Mazdar is a newly developed city, and they wanted to, of course, to have a more sustainable form of transport. So our system connects a large parking facility to the university campus. Um, we use nine of those smaller vehicles, and um, this is on a well, more dedicated infrastructure, um, but still um, we have to be able to detect obstacles, and uh, we were uh, al uh, obligated to, to have safety certification here as well. Um, but that basically means that we set up our system engineering, and uh, together with that set up a safety case where we build in redundancy, 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 so we had to show what measures we take to uh, deal with certain situations. For example, a sensor failing or brakes failing or whatever. Uh, by the way, the tracks you see are not real tracks. They are just tire marks because it's quite hot in Abu Dhabi. Um, and it runs very precise. So that's why it looks like we have some sort of guidance, but it's not the case. Um, and then um, I would like to talk about the hype, I call it, and that is operating in mixed traffic. Um, I think uh, there can certainly be situations where operating in mixed traffic can be very interesting and can be really be a solution. But there is, however, a question before that, and that is what is the transportation need you are trying to solve? Um, 
And speaking of mixed traffic, uh, we've been doing mixed traffic demonstrations already in 2003, 2004. Um, so for us, it's nothing new, but for the world out there, of course it is. And I can fully imagine uh, uh, that's the case, and I think it's really good that there are a lot of demonstrations and pilots and tests. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, as we had the discussion earlier, I uh, really believe that this, this technology is also ready for the next step, and that is a permanent application. Um, when it comes to uh, what have we learned, um, I think uh, passenger uh, uh, comfort is really, really important, maybe one of the more important aspects of, of these type of systems, because uh, we're not talking about people just taking a ride for fun, well, sometimes they do, uh, but it's also supposed to be a daily transportation need, and um, uh, for it to use it daily, uh, it has to be attractive, it has to be fast, and it has to be comfortable. Um, so, uh, uh, in the third generation uh, vehicle uh, development, we took that, of course, into account. Uh, but we also wanted to create something that can last a long time, 20 years, um, that is able to operate in almost any climate, um, uh, and, uh, well, looked a bit more innovative than uh, the second generation that was supposed to be uh, looking like a bus. Well, that really l worked because <laughs> I think it's not very attractive and the third generation looks a lot better. Um, but when it comes to mixed operations, um, it's not as easy as many people think. And um, maybe I'm preaching to the uh, choir here as well, but um, I'm going to try to explain anyway. Um, the traditional APM, the people mover systems you see at larger airports, metro systems that are driverless, basically operate in an environment that is completely controlled. So you can control the speed, you can control the intersections, you can control the access to the track, and you can control the behavior of the people using it and the people surrounding it. Um, what the traditional car industry is trying to do is they are trying to solve uh, a completely uncontrolled environment from the vehicle alone. Um, we all know, um, or, or at least a lot more people are st starting to realize that that is still a long way ahead, um, if it will happen at all. Um, luckily, there is also good news, and that is that in a semi-controlled environment, uh, we are already able to uh, install a system that actually works. Um, but um, it's something else to just put a vehicle anywhere. Um, I think the uh, so the environment in which you operate is a very important part of um, your system and how you can deal with the scenarios that can occur there. And that might mean that you have to add another traffic light or get rid of some parked cars or um, have some kind of segregation between pedestrians and your system, um, not only for safety but also for performance. If you have to mix with uh, uh, pedestrians and bicyclists and all the time, you will be driving 5 to 10 kilometers an hour, and you will not be attractive for your user. So that's something to keep into account. And that also means that for our systems, we see three different markets. Um, the one on the left is on a dedicated infrastructure. Um, still a cheap infrastructure compared to real bound systems, but still we would be able to use our own dedicated infrastructure be able to operate at very high frequencies and be able to transport a lot of passengers, up to 6,000 uh, people per hour per direction. Um, alternative would be, and a lot, a lot easier to implement in existing cities, for example, uh, operate on a sort of bus lane. So, yes, you will have some matter of mixing with other traffic, but still you would be able to uh, 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 operate on a dedicated lane and um, uh, be able to reach higher frequencies and uh, higher capacities. Uh, the one on the far right, uh, yes, can, very, can be very interesting. So just mixing with everything. Um, however, uh, you have to take into account that this will uh, uh, very much affect uh, um, the performance of your system. You will be stuck behind other traffic. Uh, you will be, as I always say, as fast as the slowest user in front of you. As long as we realize that, um, that can definitely be a solution as well. Um, then the projects we are working on right now, um, the purple line you see on the left, I hope everyone can see it, is the existing Rivium line. 
and we will actually replace this system with, of course, the new vehicles, but also a new, new supervisory system, new ICT infrastructure, new communication infrastructure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we will expand this to uh, the public road as well. And when I say expand it to the public road, I mean something that is safety certified, that is proven, and does not require safety steward on board. And um, uh, we will do that expansion on the public road um, by the end of 2020, because we are still working on the techn technological roadmap in order to verify every technology that we will use right there. Um, and it will also create traffic from uh, the water side, and because now we are connecting a metro station to a business area, uh, but there will be a stop from uh, at there, out there at, from the water bus. We have a water bus in the Netherlands. I'm not sure if you have those in Sweden. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> that will also create traffic from the water side to the metro and create a fast entrance to the uh, uh, city of Rotterdam. Uh, another project we are very proud of is uh, at Zaventem Airport, Brussels Airport. Um, there we will uh, connect uh, the largest and cheapest parking in, uh, at the airport area. Uh, they call it the Dutch parking. I'm not sure about how, how much you know about Dutch people, but we tend to be cheap. So that's why they call it the cheapest parking, the Dutch parking. Anyway, um, uh, and we will connect that uh, to uh, the terminal building. And this will also be fully in mixed traffic at uh, speeds that can deal with other traffic around you. So that will be somewhere between 40 and 50 kilometers per hour. And uh, of course, uh, without anyone on board. So um, with an operator, of course, monitoring the system. And um, there will be uh, several options to expand that system in the future. Um, last example, this is uh, Blue Waters. This is a newly built island in Dubai with the largest Ferris wheel in the world uh, on it because, well, it is Dubai. And um, uh, uh, the red line you see on the right is the existing metro line and it was way too expensive to expand that metro line to the newly built island. So they were looking for, uh, for an alternative and uh, we became that alternative. The green line is, is our uh, connection and we need to transport up to 5,000 people per hour per direction there, meaning uh, frequencies of about 26 seconds each way, and so 13 seconds both ways. Well, if you want to do that in mixed traffic, it's simply impossible. Uh, imagine cr uh, crossing a, a busy crossroad every 13 seconds. That's, that's suicide. Um, so here is quite a good reason, actually, to have a dedicated lane and uh, uh, to make sure you can deal with those frequencies and those capacities. So what I'm trying to get at um, is that, that basically the transportation demand is the first and very most important step to define what technology works best at that specific location. That's about it. Thank you very much for your attention.